Next up on our docket is the concept of crystal forms. We'll break this into two shorter lectures. In the textbook, it's covered in full from pages 134 to 142. And we'll key our discussion into this figure here, which is of what mineral? Uh, maybe you don't have enough practice yet, but you see one, two, three, four, five, six faces. It's growing upwards in this kind of prism shape. Well, this is hexagonal aquamarine crystal. We're going to start off with three definitions under the idea of crystal form. And really, the definition we're heading towards is what is a crystal form? Well, it's a group of like faces related by symmetry. So on this crystal right here, there are these faces, one, two, three, four, five, six, that are all related to the A6 rotational axis that goes through the C axis. And so this one, two, three, four, five, six faces would be all related together and it'd be called a crystal form. But we aren't quite there yet. Let's go through our three definitions talking about what crystals look like. And all these words are somewhat synonymous. So we're going to define morphology. We're going to define crystal habit. And then we'll get to form. Okay, and they are all largely synonymous. Synonym, uh-oh, blanking on how to spell it. So I'll just kind of give up. But they're all somewhat synonymous. Morphology means the general outward appearance. It's the le least technical, probably, of all the ways we could describe a crystal. We might describe this one as a hexagonal prism, right? Because we see the six sides. That's the morphology. Our crystal habit is a little more technical. It's going to be our external shape in crystallography. external shape in crystallography. We haven't learned all these vocabulary words yet, but, but things like euhedral, prismatic, acicular, these are different sin, um, adjectives that we'll learn later for, to describe crystal habit. Botryoidal is a fun one. Form, though, is kind of a subset of these, more it's precise to a small part of a crystal, and it is just a group of like faces group of like faces related by symmetry by symmetry the symmetrical things might be something like a rotation axis or maybe a mirror plane there are two different types of forms there are things called open forms and there are things called closed forms, right? As we break down the types of forms out there, there ends up being about 48 different types of forms that we could identify in a crystal. And so our first way to break that down is with open and closed. And in this example here, these are only open forms. And we call them open because they do not enclose space. A closed form is a type that encloses space. To draw a closed form, all we need to do right here is draw a cube. And the idea is every face of this cube is related to another face, either by a fourfold rotation or better yet, that bar three. And so it fully encapsulates all the space within it by those faces. So it is called a closed form. This hexagon over here, which let's just go ahead and draw in hexagonal prism. Ooh, got a little messy. This crystal has top and a bottom. That would be form A. And then there would be these faces here form B. The form B is related by an A6 rotation of symmetry to reproduce them all. Form A would either be from a mirror plane that cuts across the crystal like so, or maybe you would want to argue instead that there's an A2 that flips the crystal 180 degrees to repeat the top and the bottom faces. 
Okay, these are examples of open. And the whole shape, like this aquamarine, is built of multiple forms. And that's like one more kind of main point about forms is that they may be combined. Let's say that, let's say this. Forms may be combined. And in fact, many minerals do show combinations of forms. When we see combinations of forms, let's just look at these examples right here. So here are two examples. Here we have one face, two face. They're all related to one another by a fourfold axis of symmetry. Here's an A4. Then that's an open face. C and C is another and a, A, and then you can imagine there's some on the back side. So this whole shape has, how many is it? One, two, three, three forms combined to make the entire crystal. This is the norm rather than the exception. The symbology that we use to describe forms, when it's generic, we may just put in like numbers. These aren't numbers, these are letters. We may just put in letters and say, okay, every face that's kind of tilted and angular like this, we'll label P. All of these vertical ones with this size, we'll label M. So that's our generic symbology, but there's also a more precise symbology that we can do. So we're gonna go here, Roman numeral two is symbology for crystal forms. And what we do with this is we use the simplest Miller index inside of a curly bracket. All right, that's our definition and that's what we're gonna to head to in these, some, in these examples. So the symbology is the simplest Miller indices or Miller index inside of curly brackets. An example of what this bracket one 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 might be the simplest face on an octahedron inside these curly brackets well I know I'm not now talking about a single face on that octahedron I'm talking about the whole shape because they're in curly brackets instead of parentheses so let's just do this as a big example I'm gonna to try to draw this nice and clean you do too this is a hexag hexagonal crystal we use this a lot in our examples Up ahead, earlier in the notes, I showed that there are two forms that comprise this crystal. We label them A and B in green and in red. We can do the same thing here, right? We have this one that's related by a six-fold, which are these long sides. Okay, this is one form, and it is one, two, three. Oh, we need to put the, we can put these in the back side here too. And then there was these other, the top, all right, and the bottom, that was our second form. So we're going to say here in red, we have an, uh, two like faces related by an A2. And there are also six like faces related by an A6. Now if we put in, let's go blue here. If we put our, we're gonna put our C-axis in, like so. We could actually work through what is the different um, Miller indices of the red faces. Well, in this face, we're intersecting. It's parallel, we should put in these two, right? We're gonna have a1 and let's see a2 and then going out the back here that's a3 a1 a2 and a3 so these top and bottom faces have miller indices of 0 0 0 1 and 0 0 0 minus 1 the simplest of the faces is this one kind of arbitrary it's just the one that's the most positive so we would say that the form symbol 
of the red faces is 0, 0, 0, 1 inside of curly brackets. And if you were to say this to a mineralogist, they would know immediately that you're talking about the top and bottom faces of a hexagonal prism. We can do the same thing with the faces related by the A6. Here, we could, um, we probably should just go through and identify every single Miller indice, okay? So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have this front face, this front face intersects Better put in the negative faces now. So where's the A1 minus go? The A1 minus goes out here the back. So A1 minus. A3 minus comes out here the front. A3 minus. And A2 minus shoots out here this side. A2 minus. So if we're going to go through all of these, this is a good lesson for Miller indices from before. This front face intersects the A at 1. It intersects the B never. It's parallel. It intersects the sorry the the A two. It intersects the A three at minus one, and it intersects the C never. So it gets parallel. That's this face. Now we move on to this face. Well, it intersects the A one at one. It intersects the A two at minus one. It intersects the A three never, and the C never. Okay? And what we could do is just now go through and do all the rest of them. This face, this face, this face, and this face. And if we do that, you could actually pause this video right here and try it on your own. I'm going to go here and just knock them out. One and zero. Then the next face around. So we have, so we could have A face, B face, C face. That's A. This is B. This is C, D, E, and then F is this front face. Okay, so A, B, C, D is minus 1, 0, 1, 0. It's D. E should be minus 1, 1, 0, 0. And then finally F will have the Miller indice, Miller index of 0, 1, minus 1, and 0. Those are all our possibilities, but what we need to do is find the simplest Miller index in order to represent it as our symbol. So finding the simple one is the most arbitrary. Every single one has at least one minus in it. Every single one of them has one positive. But what we're going to do is we're, we tend to choose the one with the positive number in the front as the simplest. It's somewhat arbitrary, and so we could just kind of say here, in this case, simplest is arbitrary. But commonly, we choose ones with the A positive as our choice. And so we're going to say that the simplest Miller index is 0, let's see, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, which gives our form symbology curly bracket 1, 0, minus 1, 0. All right, that'll be it for this one. We'll get going with the next part of symbol of crystal forms next time.